Hello, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com, and today we're going to test various moving average pairs. We're going to first start off with the S&P 500, then we'll see if short positions add value or not. Also, I came up with a surprising pair or strategy to consider with moving averages. We'll look at trading SPX signals with SPY, and then I'm going to show you some chart tricks to plot the direction of an SMA and the rate of change of an EMA. So before we get started, just a few generalizations on moving averages. First of all, moving averages work when the market trends. If you have a choppy market environment, then your moving average signals are just going to generate whipsaws. Now, markets do show evidence of trending, and that's why moving averages over the long term tend to work. Second, the longer the moving average, the more the lag. So a 200-day moving average is going to lag price a lot more than, say, a 20-day moving average. Third, the shorter the moving average, the more whipsaws. So you're going to get quicker signals with that shorter moving average, but you're also going to be at the expense of more whipsaws. There's always a trade-off in technical analysis between faster signals but you get more whipsaws, you get later signals, but you get fewer whipsaws. So you got to, you know, make that trade off and decide what works best with you. I think overall, though, longer term moving averages are more efficient and they work well as a filter for general price direction. And finally, the perfect moving average or moving average pair does not exist. I don't think you need to go around fitting every stock, every ETF you see to the perfect moving average. I think it's best to pick a moving average that suits your trading style or whatever you're trying to define and stick with that moving average, be it a 50 day or a 200 day. Now, there are certain circumstances when you might want to change, like if you have a technology stock that is quite volatile, you might want a longer moving average as opposed to, say, a utility or consumer staple that is less volatile, then maybe you want to use a shorter moving average. So the first moving average I'm going to test would be a five-day simple moving average. And then I'm going to pair it with another moving average. This is a 25-day moving average in red here. So you can see that there's the red 25-day simple moving average and then the five-day simple moving average. And not surprisingly, you can see a lot of whipsaws there in 2015. Uh, you got some here when the market turned choppy there in 2018 and there in October and November of 2018. Uh, but, you know, you see all these whipsaws, but you say, well, how did it perform over time? So I took the 25-year period here from 1994 to 2019, and we had 169 signals, only bullish signals. I'll get to the bearish ones later. But we basically had 70 winners and 99 losers. So you can see you have more losers than winners. And this is very typical for a moving average system. All right, but you can see that the average gain was 4.42% and the average loss was 2.16%. So you would have had a profit, but it wouldn't have been very much. You would have gone through a whole lot of trouble just to scrape out a small profit, as you'll see from the compound annual return a minute, in a minute here. Now, as with any system, you can see that there will be some really good trends here. You know, this signal here in November 2016 caught a pretty nice advance into March. And then the signal here in September into January 2018 caught a really good move. And it would have kept you out of most of the damage here on the downside and gotten you in fairly early on this advance here. So there are some, you know, moves to be caught, but it's going to be at the expense of whipsaws. All right, so what if you had traded this system and this top line here shows the five-day SMA, 25-day SMA cross, and if you had just bought and sold the S&P 500 on every signal, only long positions, well, you know, you would have had basically a measly 3.23% annual return. You would have been in the market 63% of the time, 
And you can see there we went over the profitable trades 70, the losing trades 99. So your winning percent was well below 50%. And then I decided to do the, do the five-day SMA with some longer moving averages to see how that worked. And so you can see I'm going here from 25 days to 50, 75, all the way to 250. And what you notice here is that as the moving average gets longer, the slower moving average, the compound annual return goes up. So when you get that bigger moving average on the right side, the longer moving average, you're going to have a better chance at higher returns. And your exposure is going to go up a little bit as well from 65 to 74%. And then your winning percentage is going to go up. All right, from 39, 30, 37, all the way to the 40s, once you get to 200 days, 200, 225, 250. And of course, the average gains and the average losses. The average gains are going to be a lot more than the average losses when you're using that longer moving average. Well, what if I did a little bit more smoothing uh, for that short moving average? What if I used a 10-day moving average? And then I look at a def uh, the other moving averages on the long side. This example shows the 10-day and the 100-day moving average cross. And you can see you had a lot fewer signals, only 44 signals. And look at that, 22 winners and 22 losers. So your success rate went up to 50%. And the average gain was greater than the average loss. So that tells you that you have a profitable system because the average gain is three times the average loss and you have a 50% success rate. And you can see here in this period, we didn't get as many whipsaws there in 2015, and we didn't even get one there in October, November. And also, we only had one cross there instead of a couple. So fewer whipsaws when you just go from a 5-day to a 10-day moving average, and we went from 25 days to 100 days. Now let's look at the table to see how that 10-day average test with the other averages. So again here, I'm testing the 10-day SMA crossing above the 25-day SMA. And then I am expanding that longer, slower moving average to 50, 75, all the way to 250. So when the 10-day crosses above the 250, here are the results. And you can see here that the compound annual return goes from around 4.5% to 7.63%. And exposure gradually goes higher and it gets into the 70s once you got that 10-day, 125-day cross here. And then when we look at the winning percentage, it kind of hovers in this, you know, 40 to 50 percent. But it starts getting higher as that moving average gets longer. As you get into the 150, 175, 200-day moving average, you're getting a longer or higher winning percent here. And of course, the average gain is much bigger than the average loss when you get to these longer moving averages. So these longer moving averages do tend to work better than these shorter moving averages. These shorter moving averages produce a lot of whipsaws. You can see that low winning percent there. So expect a lot of losers if you're going to try such a system. Now, this next moving average pair is rather unusual. You can see it's the 20-day moving average and the 25-day moving average. So there's only like five days separating the length of these two moving averages. So that means they're going to be pretty close together. And so I ran this, and you had 164 bullish signals, so a lot of signals. But look at that. You had more winners than losers. You had 94 winners, 70 losers, and the average gain was bigger than the average loss. So a 57% success rate. So I thought this was pretty interesting and I thought it's a, new, a unique way to look at moving averages and I'll do a little bit more research in this later on, maybe looking at like a, a 50 day and a 70 day and see how those work when you have two moving averages that are closer together as far as the time frame is concerned. Let's look at another chart here to see how this looks in more detail because there you can see 
a one year chart going back through 2018 here. And we can see the 20 day moving average in green and the 50 uh, the 25 day in red. So they stay really close to each other. And then you get a cross and it usually lasts for a few days, if not a few weeks here. You can see there was a short cross in late November and then you got a cross in December down and there's going to be lag, you know, five day is not going to have as much lag as say 20 day, 20 days getting a lot of lag. You wouldn't have got a bull gotten a bullish signal until the latter part of January here on this most recent upturn in the stock market. But this is something to consider maybe to say, which is the, what is the path of least resistance? You know, moving averages aren't just for trading. All right. I like to use them mostly as a filter. All right. So I only look at stocks that say are above their 200 day moving average. Or in this case, maybe I would only look at stocks that have a 20 day moving average above the 25 day moving average. That tells me that I'm filtering out for some sort of an uptrend and I'm looking for signals in harmony with that trend. Now, I came across this 20, 25 day cross because I was running this optimization using the 20 day moving average and seeing how it performed with other moving averages as the long moving average. And there's the 20, 25 day cross at the top. And you can see that 5.4% compound annual return in the market 62% of the time. You know, this performed better than the 20, 100 day cross, which is kind of surprising. And then if you look at the winning percent, again, you saw that 57%. And then if we look at other 20 day combos, you know, it gets interesting when you get down to the 20, 200 day, the 20, 225 day and the 20, 250 day. You know, these three are about the same as far as I'm concerned. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. And I kind of just settled on the 20, 200 day as my preferred combination. So what if we add short positions to the mix? I always get this question. The two questions I get most are, well, maybe you should try a different moving average pair. And the other one is, well, maybe you should add short positions. And, you know, the truth is, as I said about moving average pairs, there's no such thing as the perfect pair. You know, the time frame 2200 works for me because 20 is about a month and 200 is about nine months. And, and that's a nice, you know, area to look for as far as a bigger trend is concerned when the 20 day is above the 200 day. But I'm going to go ahead and add short positions to show you what happens. So this is the five day, 25 day moving average cross. The first one I showed you here. And there we have the 41% win rate there. And the average gain was 4.42 and the average loss was 2.1. One six, And if we add shorts, of course, we get double as many trades, 338 trades. And you can see we have 111 winners and we have twice as many losers. So your winning percentage drops to 33%. So that's not good. And nothing much happens to your average gain and average loss, but that drop in winning percent is no good. And so that's what's negatively affecting when you have short positions added because short positions tend not to work in the long term. You know, they're going to work during a bear market, but the market is in a an uptrend 70% of the time. So 30% of the time you can maybe make money using short positions, but that other 70%, you're going to get whipsawed on those short positions and lose money. So here's that first table of moving average pairs that I showed you. And this is a long short test over the period, the 525, the 550 and so on. And then you can see the compound annual return for the short term moving averages, 525 and 550 is negative. So you would have lost money using this system. And then you can see even with the longer moving averages, your return didn't get above 6% and your drawdowns were in that 26 to 30% area and your winning percent was quite low down in the 25 to 27% range, which is, isn't very good. Here's the 10, 100 moving average cross. And to recap, there are the bullish signals 
with a 50% success rate. And then you get twice as many signals when you go long short and your success rate drops to 35%. And that's usually what happens when you add short positions to your mix. So here's the table using the 10 day moving average as the short, faster moving average, and then 25, 50, 75, and so on for the longer, slower moving average. And so you buy on a bullish cross and you sell, sell short on a bearish cross. Of course, you buy cover on a bullish cross. But you can see, you know, short term, 10, 25, 10, 50, you're not making any money. All right. These short term moving averages usually don't work in the short term. Longer term. OK, you know, you got your returns above six percent with a 10, 200 day, the 10, 20, 225 day and the 10, 250 day. And you can see that, you know, your winning percent was 30 to 36 percent. Not great. One third of the time. And your average gain was better than your average loss here, especially when you got to the 225 to 250 day. But still, you know, did short positions really add value? No. And I'll have a comparison table coming coming up here. So what about the 20, 200 day moving average pair? Now we're getting to the longer end. You know, we have a pretty slow short term moving average, 20 days, and we have a long term moving average, 200 days. So we've slowed it down quite a bit. And there's a recap of the bullish signals. You can see 16 bullish signals over the last 25 years, 11 winners, average gain 28%. Five losers, average loss 2.16%. And then if we add short positions to the mix, look what happens to our numbers. Okay, we have double the positions, so we're exposed to the market all the time. You had 14 winners and now 19 losers. So your win percent has gone below 50%. Whereas here it's well above 50%, your winning percent. You can see the average gain was 26.8% respectable, but your average loss doubled. So not only do you have more losers, but the losers are doubling in their average loss when you add short positions over the last 25 years. So this does not seem to be a viable addition to a trading strategy. So here is the test for the long short using the 20 day moving average as the fast moving average. And then 25, 50, 75, and so on for the slower, longer moving average. And you know, your compound annual return didn't get above 5% until you went to a 20 day, 150 day. So that tells you that, you know, these here are not worth pursuing. And then if you look at the winning percent, it's kind of all over the place. You got 48% in the beginning, but it dropped down to 30% when you're using the 20 day, 150 day. So that's no good. And then you got above 40% when you were using a 20 day, 175 day and higher. So basically, you know, short positions don't add that much value. And now let's look at a side by side comparison. So this table shows the same moving average pairs on the left. And then I've got a black column for the long positions. That's the compound annual return. Red column for the short positions, compound annual return. And so you can compare these. And you can see that in every case here that the compound annual return is higher for just using long positions. So there's no value in return wise to add short positions. You look at the drawdowns. All right, the drawdowns are higher when you add short positions to these moving average crossover strategies. You can see the winning percentages are also lower when you add short positions to the strategy 51 to 34, 69 to 45, 80 to 48. So you're going to have more losing positions. That's more on your psychology when you have more losing positions. And then we look at the average gain versus the average loss. All right, short term, yeah, the the short positions may be holding their own, but as you get longer term, 
you can see that the long only positions work much better with a higher average gain relative to the average loss. So you can see here with the long positions, you have a higher compound annual return, you have a higher winning percentage, and you have a higher average gain to average loss. And that's why it is usually best just to skip the short side of the market. So what if we used SPY as our trading vehicle for longs and shorts? Well, you can see here that if you're long only and you use these S&P 500 signals and you trade SPY, you have a very respectable 9.51% annual return. You have a 69% winning rate and your average gain is much better, larger than the average loss. Now, I just use shorting SPY for this test. Of course, I could have used an inverse ETF, but then I couldn't have gone back as far to 1994. But I think the essence will work here. And you can see if you shorted here, your compound annual return was less, but you're in the market all the time. So you were exposed 28% more. So you had more risk. And you can see that your drawdowns on average were much higher, 15.4 to 23.4. And again, your winning percentage dropped to 42%. So that's the reason why short positions on the broader market usually don't make sense. Now, another thing to consider is when a moving average turns up. So here's a chart with the S&P 500 and the 200-day moving average. And you know, when we eyeball it, we can see that the moving average is rising here. And then, yeah, maybe it starts to fall here and here and flattens out here, but we're not sure when it turned up here. And if we want to find out when it turned up, what we need to do is view the S&P 500 plot as invisible and shorten the time frame. So what I'm going to do is go down here and for chart type, I'm going to change this to invisible. And now for the time frame, I'm just going to go out, say, three months and I'm gonna leave the 200 day there. And now we'll be able to focus exclusively on the 200 day moving average. So there you can see that the 200 day bottomed here in the middle of January and started turning up there and has been going up since February. So a rising 200 day moving average is also a positive. And no, I haven't tested this yet. That will be for a, another day here. But that's just the method to see if the moving average is rising or not. Now, if you like to use an exponential moving average, then you can use an indicator to tell you when it has turned up or down via the rate of change. So on this window, I've got the 200-day EMA if the, with the blue line. You clearly see it's rising there. It's falling there and it started to turn up here. But we can capture the rate of change of that 200 day EMA by using MACD with a special setting. So I've got default MACD in the indicator window below. And if we scroll down to the indicator settings, there you can see MACD. So MACD is the short moving average minus the long moving average. So in this case, the 12 day EMA minus the 26 day EMA. So if I change this to 200, and then I put zero, which basically means zero, nothing, and then one, and I click update, then I'm gonna get the 200 day EMA in that window below. And there you can see 2705 and 2705 for the 200 day EMA. Now, if I wanna know the rate of change of this EMA to tell me when it has turned up or down, I can add an indicator to this MACD. So in the overlay section, and if you don't see that, then you need to open the advanced settings there. So I'm going to click price rate of change, and I'm going to click 10. So that's going to tell me when over a 10 day period is the EMA risen or fallen. And I will click update. And now I will get a chart. And you can see on the left scale there is the scale for the rate of change. And you can see that it turned positive there in February. So that was when the 200 day moving average turned up. And you can see the 200 day moving EMA turned down in the second half of October there. 
So that's a really easy way to tell you when the 200-day or any EMA turns up or turns down. So on this chart here, I've got the 10-day EMA and the 100-day EMA, and I showed a system earlier that used the 10-day SMA and 100-day SMA. And the reason I switched to EMAs here is because you can use an indicator to show you the difference between these two EMAs. So we've got it on the chart, and you know, just by eyeballing it, you can see there was a cross there, a bullish cross, and then you had a bullish cross and a bearish cross there for a whipsaw and a bearish cross, and a bearish cross, and a bullish cross. But if we want to get that in an indicator with some signals, we can use the PPO. That is the Percentage Price Oscillator. It's a percentage version of MACD. And to get those settings there, what we need to do is change this to 10, 100. And instead of adding a signal line, I'm going to add zero and you put zero for the signal line, that displays the PPO histogram, uh, PPO as a histogram there. And if I wanna see more detail in that, I can change the height of this window to one. So now I'm gonna get a big PPO, and I can see quite clearly when the 10-day EMA crosses above the 100-day EMA, because the PPO turns positive as it did here and also in May, and there it turned negative, and here it turned positive. So that's a good way to track the difference between two EMAs. Now, if you ever need any inf more information about an indicator such as an exponential moving average, how it's calculated, or MACD or the PPO, you can go to our chart school. I'm here on the charts and tools page, and at the top of every web page, you'll see a link for the chart school. If you click on that link, you can search for a term there in the search box, or you can scroll down and there you see a link for technical indicators and overlays. And every indicator that is covered here at Stock Charts is featured in these articles. All right, there we have moving average, Moving Average Envelopes, another form of a trend-following indicator. And you can scroll down, and there you can see all the indicators with all the details on how to use them. There's MACD, and if you want to know the difference between MACD and the PPO, you can read about the PPO as well. So here are a few key takeaways. Long-term moving averages tend to perform better when we're talking about the S&P 500 and stocks. You better prepare for whipsaws if you're going to use short-term moving averages. A lot of bad signals. Overall, short positions do not add value, especially when we're talking the S&P 500. And remember, you can apply signals from the S&P 500 to SBY and other ETFs. And it's easy to chart the direction of a simple moving average or the rate of change of an exponential moving average on the Sharp Charts workbench. So that concludes this presentation. Thanks very much for tuning in and have a great day. This is a brief demo about how to scan for things that made a new high earlier in the week or the month. Rather than using a daily scan, uh, which would say that it didn't make a new high today, by using a monthly scan, it'll get anything that was above this previous time period. So to do that, we go into technical scans and we create this month's high is greater than last month's maximum over the previous 12 months. I've also set it up with a close greater than $5. But when we run that scan, um, obviously it brings us our data and what we can do is we can sort it into industry and sector and buckle was the current stock that I had up there but look at how many apparel retailers are also hitting new highs in this current month so this would lead you to believe that there's some uh, strength in that sector.